Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Monday, July 10th, 2017. I want to talk about two things today. One, the pitch drop experiment. For those of you who haven't heard about this, it's the longest running continuous experiment. A quantity of highly viscous fluid called pitch has been suspended in a funnel and allowed to drip. It has been dripping continuously for decades. We're about to see the ninth drop fall. <laughs> So yeah, one drop per decade, something like that. Rather slow experiment. Pretty impressive uh, in that it works as well as it does. Pretty impressive that it's been on live stream for years now on the internet, but not, not a single drop has actually fallen. You can turn into the live stream and see if you happen to be tuned in at just the moment it happens to create a drop, which would be pretty fun. I've tuned in a couple times over the last few years, always hoping that that would be the day, but it never has been. So you can join me in my anticipation if you like. Got the allergies really badly today, beg your pardon for my strange voice. The other thing I wanted to talk about was a new design for the all iron battery. Having thought a bit about how to construct this thing and talked with my colleagues here at the University of Idaho, came up with the idea of using a series of plastic bags where each plastic bag has both electrodes and the separator and then the bags can be connected easily in series to make a higher voltage cell. So the question is, what kind of separator can you fit into a plastic bag? And will it be good enough to keep the edges from shorting? So I've been thinking about that. And I would like to try a new separator material. Up to now, I've been using agarose, which is essentially a natural gel polymer. But it would be nicer to use something that would actually prevent the two sides of the battery from contaminating one another. Cross-cell contamination is not as big a deal for all iron batteries as it would be for a battery with two different chemistries at the anode and cathode, but even so, it's a mechanism for self-discharge. It causes problems in the longer term, so let's see if we can solve it. So a good separator has three properties. It prevents electric current, it allows the ions you want, and it prevents the ions you don't want from passing through. So in this case, we would want something that prevents electric current just by the conductivity of ionic solutions. We want something that allows sodium to pass through, but prevents the iron ADTA from passing through. So how could we do that? One way is to make a polymer that has a strongly negative charge. That'll tend to exclude the negatively charged iron EDTA from the interior of the membrane, but allow the positively charged sodium to exchange. We can make such a material if we include a negatively charged molecule in the polymer that is making up the membrane. And in this case, I'd like to try to use some acrylic acid. So how does it work? How do you make an acrylic, a polyacrylic acid separator? So what we need to do is we need to make acrylic acid some sort of crosslinker. We probably don't want 100% acrylic acid because it has its own structural issues. And so we can include some acrylamide, which is uncharged and will tend to bind things together. And we polymerize the whole mess into polyacrylamide co-polyacrylic acid. And from there, we see the performance of the membrane. So we'll try that tomorrow. I uh, hope you'll tune in. I'll show you some results and we'll see just what kind of membrane we get when we make a proper polymer separator. Until then, if you like that kind of thing, tune into the Allen Lab. We update Monday through Friday. We talk about science and chemistry and batteries, DIY projects here in the Allen Lab.